Good morning. Welcome to this service of worship as we gather together on Good Friday. This is the day of pain and suffering that we call good. This is the time when brave and gracious love was lost. This is the time where we receive again the story of great faith. In this day, at this time, in this place, we remember and worship. You may be seated. We are going to suggest that you remain seated during the hymns this morning, and we were not going to announce them, so if you follow through uh, in your bulletin as the hymns come up. The uh, first one, the upper room, uh, is a tricky tune, so perhaps we can learn from the choir as they lead us in that. Let us come together in a word of prayer. O vulnerable God, you give yourself utterly and never withhold. Oh, how you suffer and pay the price for this giving, though we may resist the gift. We continue with our prayer of confession. With mixed feelings, we go out after supper to pray with you, O Christ. With fear, we approach the courts of the mighty where you stand with dignity. With dread, we join in your final walk. With stifled sobs, we react to your final breath. Now as we stand before the cross, as we look at the stains on our hands and hearts, we confess our sin. Fear and hatred live on. Power is abused all around us. The shadows that gather deep and cold. We discover that we fear pain and suffering more than we love the good news that was in Jesus Christ. Good news for all people, for those suffering and those being crucified, for all creatures and all creation. In When your good news stirred up fear and hatred, O Christ, you said, Not my will, but yours be done. May this same love be in us, that all hearts may be opened and your victory be shared by all. Amen. We are so grateful that death does not have the last word. So grateful that love is stronger than fear.
I'll go. I realize some of you don't even know me. My master is a friend of Nicodemus. My master is also a secret follower of Jesus. I'm just a slave, and I can slip in and out of places without being noticed. I've carried messages for my master before. He says I have a gift for slipping in and out of places and not being noticed. You are all from Galilee. You've come just in for the Passover feast. You don't know the city as well as I do. I'll go. It would be too dangerous for the rest of you. There's too many soldiers here. They're expecting trouble. It's best you stay right here. And I know one of the 12. I know Andrew. Before I came tonight, I saw him. He was on his way to the garden with the other disciples. He said that they had had the Passover meal with Jesus. Andrew said at the meal, Jesus did some kind of ritual with the bread and the wine, said it was like his body. He seemed to be saying he was giving up his life for them and it was a gift. Then Jesus took a slave's towel and wrapped it around himself and then washed the feet of the 12. Andrew wept, he said, to have Jesus wash his feet. Well, he wept. Peter didn't want Jesus to wash his feet, he said. No, Rabbi, you're not going to wash my feet. And Jesus said, if I don't wash your feet, Peter, then you have no part with me. Peter said, oh, Lord, wash my hands then, my head, wash all of me. But Jesus said something that he only needed his feet washed. He said Jesus told them that one of the twelve would betray him. That was frightening. One of them, and who? The disciples were all asking, is it me? Could I possibly do this? Peter said, no, Rabbi, I would never betray you. I would die for you. And Jesus looked at him and said, Peter, you will deny me three times tonight. Then they all left and went with Jesus to the garden to pray. It's too dangerous for any of you to leave here. There are so many Roman soldiers everywhere. I will go. I will find out where Jesus is and come and tell you. Wait here. I don't understand what is happening. I found a place to hide near the garden, just on the edge, in the shrubs. I hid because I heard soldiers coming, a company of soldiers. But I saw Judas arriving with a company of soldiers. He was leading them into the garden. I was so afraid, so many soldiers. There were some chief priests with them and some Pharisees that I know have been against Jesus from the start. I waited a long time, but I couldn't go further into the garden. There was some yelling, but it didn't sound like there was a fight, and then I saw Jesus' disciples run from the garden. I would have run then too, but I was hidden so well. To come out of hiding, I might have been discovered. 
Then the soldiers started coming out of the garden, so many soldiers. And finally I saw, I saw, it was Jesus, and he was bound. And some soldiers were pushing him in front of them. I heard one of them say they were taking him to the high priest. I don't understand. I am afraid. Why was Judas leading 600 soldiers into the garden? What can this mean? What? No, no, it's not safe for any of you. Please stay. Stay here, I will go. No, it's okay, I will do this. I will go out and find out where Jesus is. I will do this. I saw Peter. I just came from Herod's palace. I was in the outer courts of the Praetorian. I found Peter and we were wondering how to get some information. There was a Pharisee, one who is faithful to Jesus. He slipped us into the courtyard. The high priest but told us not to draw attention to ourselves. We could wait and see what they decided to do with Jesus. The slave girl who was by the door recognized Peter. She asked him if he wasn't one of the disciples. Peter said he was not. We were both so afraid. Would we be arrested next? We moved away from the door and over towards the fire. It was getting quite cold. I stayed in the shadows a bit though, because there were other slaves in the courtyard. One of the men by the fire noticed Peter and asked him if he was one of Jesus' disciples. Peter said, no, he was not. Then a slave of the high priest said he recognized Peter from the garden. He had been with the priests when they arrested Jesus. Peter denied it a third time, and then the rooster crowed. Before Pilate, I saw one of the slaves that came from Rome with Pilate. No, no, don't worry. He doesn't know I am a follower. 
I heard him talking to some of the other slaves. They don't understand us people or our customs. He was making fun of the chief priests that had met with Pilate. He said Pilate asked them why they didn't take Jesus and judge him according to their own laws. They said, they said, it is not lawful for them to put anyone to death. They want Jesus put to death. I don't understand. They are our religious leaders. Why do they want to put Jesus to death? Pilate went to talk to Jesus himself. He asked Jesus outright if he were the king of the Jews. What did he think Jesus would say? That he was the king? Jesus would be put to death right away if he made a claim like that. Jesus told him that his kingdom is not of this world. Pilate went back to the Judean leaders after talking to Jesus, and he found no fault in Jesus. He asked about their custom, the custom that Pilate released a prisoner during Passover. The Judean leaders all started yelling, not this man, release the bandit Barbas. Interrogation. Pilate sent Jesus to be scourged. The soldiers took some thorns, they made a crown, and they stuck it on his head. Then, I don't know how, but they found a purple robe and put it on him, and they made fun of him. They made fun of Jesus. They said, Hail, King Jesus. It was so cruel. Jesus, bloody and beaten, and then making fun of him. Pilate took him like that back to the chief priests and Judean leaders. Pilate said he found no fault in Jesus. And the chief priests and the Judean leaders, they started yelling, crucify him, crucify him. And when they told Pilate, that Jesus had made himself out to be the Son of God, Pilate was visibly shaken. He asked Jesus where he was from, but Jesus didn't answer at all. Pilate said, Don't you know I have the power to crucify you and the power to release you? But he didn't. He tried to release him, but he couldn't because the religious collaborators threatened him, saying that if he let Jesus go, he was no friend of Caesar. That shook Pilate up more. And they just kept yelling, crucify him, crucify him.
Golgotha. They have taken Jesus to the place of the skull, that dump site outside the city. They have crucified him. He hangs between two bandits. They put a sign on his cross written in three languages. It says, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Pilate wanted it written that way. The chief priests don't like it. The soldiers took his clothes in his sandals and divided them between themselves. I saw them gambling for his cloak. Jesus' mother is there, and his aunt, and Mary Magdalene, but only John of the twelve. The rest had gone into hiding. It is finished. I don't know how many hours he hung there. He must have been so thirsty. A soldier staying there filled a sponge with sour wine and raised it on a pole to his lips. Then he said, and then he said, he said, it is finished. And he died. What now? <laughs> <laughs> 